that we, we budgeted revenue flat. You know, it's a, uh, you see the second column, 2016 annualized, and in the 2017 budget, revenue, uh, our inpatient revenue continues to, uh, to decline, so our inpatient is down. We, we, we projected a 9% decrease in, uh, in inpatient revenue, lost some doctors, uh, and also just, just kind of the trend. Uh, you can see uh, outpatient revenue, and that's all the ancillaries. Uh, 37, 37 million, 347 in 2016 annualized, and 37 eight for 2017 budget. So flat there. Uh, senior care, we busted that flat. That's a growing department, but we don't have any, any more room to grow. We think we have more room, we can grow it, but uh, they're just about maxed out from a, from a place of space standpoint. Uh, total revenue, gross revenue, uh, you know, again, the flat compared to 2016, 45 million, 379 in 2016 annualized, and our budget is 45, <coughs> Most of the managed care contracts now are a percent of Medicare, so we get a uh, we get a reduction in the Medicare payment. We get a reduction pretty well across the board. You know, there's 500 a month that we that we had we have suspended paying that to uh, Dr. Davis. He was providing education for the nurses on the on the floor. What really happened with Baylor is we don't get advantage of take advantage of all, all of their volume, you know, only only portions of it. So uh, it started out a really good program. I'm not sure what it provides for us right now. Just just being honest about it. Medical records director. We don't have one. No, well, Kelly's it. We, we, and we have an like interim that right. she works a couple of days a week, but yeah. it needs to be in someone else full time. So we'll not be having swing bed, and somebody can explain that one. Joint Donna. Commission has changed their standards as they do is in, as of June 1st of this year. To have a swing bed patient, you had to have a full-time activity director for those patients, and we were fulfilling that with a social worker case management volunteer program, and they've said that's no longer acceptable. You have to have a, a certified activities director. And also we had to, um, we would have to have a, um, a multitude of other services, a social worker, which, you know, right now we're using more case management than social work. And there's just a couple of other restrictions or, or standards that they said we're required now that we're not required. So um, it ended up being cost prohibitive to continue on with that with the number of swing bed patients we were having. It would have cost a lot more than what we were going to bring in. What exactly is a swing bed? A swing bed is a patient who um, is not acute and can qualify for a lower level of care. So basically those patients are now going to the local nursing homes on a SNF level of care, a skilled nursing level of care. So it's kind of an in-between between an acute, being acutely ill and not being well enough to go home with home health or something like that. They, they need some more additional rehab or something like that. We've had a decrease in revenue. Um, that's not just from SNF, but as you can see, we didn't meet our budget, the, the projected budget, budget for last year, so, or I should say for this year. Uh, so, Revenue's down, uh, expenses down also, about 5,000. Look at all the revenue, like you'll see that that most significant unfavorable variance in revenue is, is in, in patient, regardless of what department it is. This purchase services, this is what um, Ray was talking about when the UPL program paid for our senior doctor out there, Dr. McCarthy, uh, they don't any longer. So that's what hits in here, also some Biz protect. That's what makes up this number. And you can see we've had a small decrease in net revenue, uh, but a, a big decrease in expense. Um, this big number right here is our Southwest Linen. They provide our, our linen service, our laundry service. A portion of the housekeeping salaries gets allocated to the clinic. <clears throat> this is our specialty clinic. We, um, we have one employee in this, in this actual department um, who handles all the uh, scheduling and things. So there's not a lot of expense in this department, um, but this is where the rent hits for the 501A, you know, the, the doctor's rent, the, uh, the rent that we received from Dr. Schmidt, Dr. Burroughs, 
and uh, our other specialty doctors. This time we've added, the, we've also added um, the rent for Dr. Hutch. Yeah. So that's been added into this is the rent for Dr. Hutch because she won't be there any longer. She won't be paying rent. We should be getting rent. I think we've, I don't know, we have a, an agreement already or? Not a bar will bring it back for us. Yeah. Nursing admin. We no longer have our um, clerical person here. We did not, we did not budget for the, to make, you know, to replace that person. So it's just our one person in this department. Cat Placide, she she goes. She actually is over the um, ER and med surge. So her part of her salary, even though she's in the ER department, we allocate some of her salary over here to to med surge. So it's it's half and half. If you look at if you look at the RN salaries, they're about flat from this uh, from last year. But if you look at the LBN salaries and the uh, and the uh, the nurses aid salaries, they're they're down significantly over this past year. So that's where we've been able to make pretty significant reductions in uh, salary wage expense. And that's not all good because, you know, they're low volume. We're at, you know, pretty much in, in base staffing, you know, where there's, where there's two nurses on each, each shift, unless we have one patient and it's one nurse. So, uh, you know, right, or we have 10. Yeah, yes. frankly, frankly well, like I said, never go up. Yeah, it's fine as long as the yeah. nurses that are remaining put up with that reduction in salary. Right, right. Well, they didn't take a cut in yeah. salary. Yeah. We just have cuts. Um, we cut positions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don't have any help. Yeah. We pay MCARE for our ER physicians, but we also budgeted in seven thousand dollars a month for our on-call doctors. With the loss of yeah. this is a new expense with with our uh, with our uh, this number of doctors that pay call down to three. We agreed to uh, to pay call. Uh, for uh, for other positions to give them some relief. You say they should be required to take every other weekend to be on call? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that gets it back to one in six. That's what it was when Dr. Lott was here. The doctors were on call every sixth weekend. But Dr. Lott and Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Turk and Dr. Uh, Hutchins ago were down to one in three every, every, you know, and that's, so what we agreed to do is get it back to where it was where it was when we were fully staffed with Dr. Law and Dr. Turk and, uh, and Hutch. So that's where the other uh, area comes in. Aren't there some that opt out of being uh, the medical staff, The medical staff have, have a, well, for instance, Dr. Schmidt is not on a, does not have uh, uh, full privileges. He only has courtesy privileges. Uh, and then the medical staff have excused Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Davis from call because is it not because of his age? If I say that, yeah. we're, we're losing uh, Linda Anderson. She's retiring this year, so we won't have a social worker. Do we expect to get another one? No, we're not going to. We'll use the case managers to do what. Well, nobody will fill her shoes. That's <laughs> yeah, that's true. But we'll just use the case managers as we can. Surgery department. As you can see, they didn't quite meet revenue for inpatients, so we've uh, we've just kept the annualized amounts. It was down uh, inpatient and outpatient, so our net revenue is down, but our expenses are also down by eighty-five thousand. Have you included plans in there to try and bring back the orthopedic surgeon for knee replacements and things like that more often? Some implants, and we've you know we've decided not to do those for a while, but that. I think it's something we'd like to, in the future, at some point in time, not to be able to do again. But right now, it's just a uh, cash flow standpoint. It's just, it's just tough, tough it's to do. Mostly shelling out the money up front that hurts. That's right. And then wait exactly. 90 days for it yeah. Yeah. To, re to make only a couple thousand. It, it looks to me like there's something going on in the cardiology department that, the, that all the net revenue is going down. Can you speak to that, Ray? Is it an equipment thing? So some of it's equipment thing, the halter monitor, we only have one now, so we can only send one out at a time. Uh, the other thing is we didn't have a really big flu season last year. It was kind of late, and that's where cardio makes the, you know, the respiratory side of the things is where they make a lot of their revenue. And if you don't have all the pneumonias and things like that in the hospital, they need it. True. But also I think part, part of that is whenever you, whenever you limit 
the service that you're providing, that's going to impact revenue too. So if we're not having any staff here through the night, I mean, we're not generating ready any revenue through the night. And we may have to we look at that when the flu season gets here, and we've agreed to do that. When did yeah. you eliminate that? Uh, just a month or two ago, wasn't it? Months, huh? It wasn't just a month June or two July. ago, or was it? Year July, yeah. <coughs> all because, yeah. So it had that much of an impact on the revenue. Uh, we'll look at. It, I, I don't know. You know, without without uh, digging a little deeper, <coughs> we will. We'll be able to think. We'll they actually some yeah. TV. And oh, the TV that was stolen. The one that got stolen. Not the one they bought. They replaced the one that was stolen. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Revenues in our general department. Um, you'll see. Some expense here and also this is where the bond expense the interest expense hits we talked a little bit about allocations there's about hundred and thirty five thousand dollars of allocations from the hospital to the 501a primarily me and uh, and Becky and LaDonna for the services that that we provide with us that's about 135 the other is the uh, the rent we, we charge each doctor rent, and that, that's the rent expense to the doctor and then it's rent income to the, uh, to the, to the 501A. So uh, we'll look at those as we go through there. That's about another, how much? 30 a doctor. 30 a doctor. So, so maybe, you know, maybe that's 150000 You said the salary is com combined with the bid level? The mid level is is here. here. It, it says clerical, but that's actually the the nurse. Anybody that's not the doctor not that works in the clinic, right? Right. Yeah, that that's the physician salaries. So, uh, uh, when you add, add that in the uh, the PDO, that gives you the physician salaries. Okay. We're going to show you some more in a minute, but but you know, the six hundred ninety five thousand dollar loss right now. Included in that is the thirty thousand uh, dollar rent. The the uh, salary allocation is not included in each individual physician's income statements. It's on the general side. Which the rent's going to be different um, because uh, I think, well, I explained it when it was, we were looking at Pecan, uh, Dr. Carpenter and Pecan, they both share the rent out there, plus a little bit of that uh, is allocated to rehab for their, for, for their new area. So we have him at a $68,000 loss. Particularly his mid-levels, uh, and he's agreed and they've agreed that they'll see Glen Rose patients, you know, particularly out of Dr. Hutchison's practice, you know, that uh, if they, you know, we, we've kind of reserved that for uh, for the con patients, but, but you know, he agreed, his mid-levels particularly have agreed that they'll see Glen Rose patients that are, I guess, that are coming out of Dr. Hutchison's uh, practice that, that for whatever reason, you know, would rather go out there that, uh, that see our providers here. Of course, if there were con patients, and she had a number of con patients, you know, we would like to pick those up. But to answer your question, yes, they have agreed to see more patients. And so bottom line, he's at $109,000 loss. And we're pushing our mid-level. I think it's fair to push the mid-levels. Uh, I think their uh, their practices are not as full as perhaps they could be. So certainly we provide we provide services to, uh, to, to, the, to the 501A. We provide accounting services. We do their payroll. And, and maybe I do some things too, but but I mean that is an allocation, and uh, kind of depending how you want to handle it. Yeah, if you if you're really wanting the I guess the 501A to to only absorb direct expenses, fine. We'll move it back to the hospital. We'll continue to do what we do, but we can move it back to the hospital. But it's not going to change the consolidated bottom line at all because it's just moved from one to the other. Our our, our thoughts have been is that you know that we would you know we would treat the 501A practices as if they were independent practices and allocate expenses out to them. So it really it really doesn't matter to us. It, it does. I mean, we want to improve the improve the uh, improve the look. I mean, there's 137,000 right there that uh, that that we can that bring back and that'll you know that that gets us closer to the to right here. Kind of kind of what's the philosophy behind it? You know, employing physicians and that. And, and the deal is, you know, you employ physicians, you know, so they uh, so they generate hospital uh, hospital revenue. And, and we come back and we look at, at all of our uh, all of our employed physicians, and, and we got their gross and their their net revenue. So you can we just start 
you know, forget everybody else saying. Sorry, I was trying to talk, yeah, get everybody squished in here so we could really see. Yeah, the, the, the big number there is the 3.7 billion. I mean, that's the that's the net revenue that was uh, that that uh, that was generated by our by our employee positions this last year, and that's that, that's a pretty big number. I mean, that's that's that's. That's somewhat equivalent to cash because we've got all the discounts and allowances and bad debt out of it. And then the other, then the other, the real, the real hard question is, you know, are you willing to accept a three hundred fifty-three thousand dollar loss, knowing what you know? Are you willing to accept that? And I guess our position is that is a significant improvement over uh, over twenty sixteen annualized. The bulk of that came out of the uh, came out of the positions uh, compensation. We, we recognize that, but. Uh, but there is, there is a, you know, also a fair amount of that is coming from a, from increased revenue that we've uh, that we've budgeted for the positions. For Dr. Carpenter, uh, for the year he was going to have a sixty-eight thousand dollar loss. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's about five thousand a month. Frankly, we don't know where the bottom is on uh, on inpatient admissions, inpatient revenue. Uh, you know, we had 27 admissions the last two months. I mean, if you'd ask us, I mean, we had you know, three or four years ago, we had 65. You know, year before last, we had 40. We're averaging 45 now. We're, you know, so now a lot of that's being reflected on, on outpatient revenue. I, I give you that. But with the change in in medicine and what all's going on, uh, I don't think we know where the bottom is on the on the, uh, on the patient <laughs> side. 